Hello everyone, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. If you're wondering why there's a cone shape on my desk, well, it's all going to be part of the project. We are going to build a magic hat. And it's basically divided into several parts. We're going to do the electronics, we're going to do the software, and we're going to do the mechanical parts. And of course, we're going to build the hat, which is most fun because I get to mess around with glue and paper. I also did a blog about this project on Element 14 Present a community and uh, it will show you all the details on how I build it with lots of photos. Feel free to visit it and if you have any questions you can leave them there. And I'll do my best to answer all of them. Now let's get started. So let me walk you through the schematic. First we have the power uh, input. I set it to 12 volts but you can also use a 9 volt battery if you like. First we have our protection diode. Uh, against reverse polarity of the battery. We have a converter that will transform the input voltage to an output of 5 volts. We have the micro card interface, which is basically just a holder for a micro SD card directly connected to the microcontroller. We have our amplifier board connected to the microcontroller. And we have three servos that will be used. Uh, we have an OLED display that will be used to show an eye. And of course, we have an input for our remote control and the microcontroller itself. And that's all there is to it. Now, let me walk you through the individual parts. Of course, we have our main board and basically it's already pre-assembled on one side. It has all the small SD components and we need to add a few other components on the other side. We have our audio board, we have our ESP32 dev kit and we have an OLED display. It's probably the most expensive part. We have a interface module for a remote control. And of course, we have a remote control. And then we have the servos and yeah, we do need some sort of power supply and it will work with a 9 volt battery. So why not use that? So here we have the PCB with the small SMD components. We have our protection diode. We have some capacitors. Uh, we have our regulator and another capacitor and the SD card interface. And on the other side, it's basically blank. So we're going to add some electronics there. First, we're going to place the microcontroller on the board. And then we'll add the, the headers, either for the servos that will go here, three of them. We're going to put the audio board right there. The wrong one, we need this one, like so. That's for the display. And we have our module that goes right there. And then we'll have place for a capacitor and a, a connector for the power. So let's solder this up and from there we go on to the wiring. Well, as you can see, um, I made a small design error. I didn't encounter for the socket of the remote control unit, and that's why they're so close together. But I just did a quick solution by mounting it at an angle. So that's going to be fine. And then the display will go here, like so. And the audio board will go here. And then we have some servos that will go there. And then we're ready to do some testing. So quickly assemble everything. The mouth uh, is not synchronized with the sound. All it does is make a steady movement whenever I play a sound. In a future version, I will update that to a real animatronic and it will uh, open and close the mouth accordingly to the sound. Look at me, I'm your talking head. What do you think about that? Now let me take you to the mechanical parts. For the unibrow, is going to be attached right above the eye. I made a, a holder and sew it or uh, bolt it into the head later. And all I need to do is attach an eyebrow on the outside. Now for the, the tip of the head, I haven't decided if I'm going to make it move or not. It depends on how the, the building of the head itself will work out. But in case I want to make a wiggling uh, head top, I created this one. And same goes 
I can just mount that firmly inside the head and then attach some sort of mechanism to make the, the top go uh, wiggle. And then we have of course the mouth, which is kind of uh, a bit more complicated than the other two. It consists of uh, several mechanical parts. We have two lips, we have a base, we have a servo and we have two levels here that will move the lips. So when the servo moves, the lips move. And in the head I will just apply some leather over it. And the way I assemble this is all in the block that you can see. Uh, I put some photos there. It's easier to look at the photos and to use that as a guide for assembly. Of course, we still have to build the head and put all the hardware inside the head. And for that, I get to play around with glue and paper. Okay, so things are about to get messy. I'm going to use uh, glue and lots of paper to make it more smooth and thicker so it's steady and firm when I put on the outside uh, fabric. It's actually the kind of glue you use uh, for applying wallpaper to your living room for example. Just apply lots of glue. I want the glue to be everywhere and I want it to be thick. And yeah, all the duct tape doesn't really help because it doesn't absorb the glue but there's still enough paper left that's uh, glueable. So you can use uh, all kind of paper to do this. You can use, uh, and that's preferred, toilet paper or old uh, newspapers. Well, I didn't have toilet paper, so I'm just going to apply normal paper that I cut up into pieces. Basically all it is, is covering up everything until nothing is visible anymore. It doesn't need to be that accurate because the more wrinkles I get, the better the end result. When I put the fabric on, it will also be wrinkled. This is also a nice um, hobby to do with your kids. Uh, take a balloon, pop in some air, and then do the same that I'm doing to the hat. You do to the balloon and you can make a, a piggy bank, for example. How many layers should you put on it? Well, it all depends on how strong you want it to be, because the more layers, the heavier it will become, of course. So I finished the paperwork and the glue, I put aside the leftover glue and now I just have to wait for it to dry. That'll take a few days to a week. Um, but you know what? It's a magical hat. We can just skip ahead and put in the electronics. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the hat is all dry. It's quite solid. And uh, we see some nice holes in it. So on top we're going to mount the unibrow which is a little uh, servo. Under it we're going to mount the display for the uh, I, including the magnifying glass. And below it, of course, we have our electronics and the mount mechanism. And then one more thing I added, of course, we have a speaker. I'm going to put that on the side. It's going to be in there. And later when there is uh, uh, the fabric on top, that's out of sight, but it's still hearable. Now, the first thing we're going to do is going to mount the servo. And for that, we take a little screw, put right through there. All right, bro, all right. And now let's put in the mount mechanism. And for that, we have to make sure that we also um, connect the servos. One is already connected in here and the other one is mounted right on top. And of course the speaker. Okay, so the head is almost finished. And all I need to do is apply some fabric on top. And for that, I'm going to use lots of glue. So I'm quickly going to change shirt and we'll get started. So I will be using different kinds of glues. I have several universal glue that is just good enough to uh, glue fabric onto paper, and of course, we have hot glue. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, and at some point, I have to make holes for the eye, and I have to make a hole for the mouth, and then fold the rest along the head. And then what we're going to do, is like I did in this piece of fabric, we're going to cut a round hole. I have a round little mold, like the one I used for uh, attaching the, the magnifier on the eye. I attach the, the fabric around the eye and then we're just going to stuff some fiber into the mouth and then close it up. And now we're going to carefully glue all the fiber into place. So the software is a bit more complicated than usual. Um, the ESP32 has two cores and we can use both. And we have several tasks. We have to, to move the servos, we have to play the sound, and we have to see uh, the display change in the eye movement. And all has to go smoothly. Um, so I divided those tasks over both cores and uh, in a way that one doesn't interfere with the other, so we don't see any latency. Let me walk you through the code briefly. Okay, so the sketch you have to load is called Talking Head. First, it will include 
all the libraries and of course I will define the firewalls and instances. Then it will run the setup once. It does several things. It pins the graphic task to the dictated core because I'm using two cores and um, I'm activating all the servers and I will move them to a home position. I will reset and clear the display for any leftover static that is there that I don't want. And of course I will initialize the SD card, I will initialize the audio and I will immediately start playing the introduction sound. Of course I have to define some input pins for our remote control and I will attach some interrupt functions to each and every one of them. After that, the main loop will run continuously and it does several things. It will check for a button flag, which basically means um, I'm checking if uh, a button was pressed on the remote that needs handling. And if so, then I will handle it and uh, play the appropriate sound file that goes with that. Also, while running through the main loop, uh, I'm always checking if a sound is being played. If so, the mouth has to start moving and the same goes for the unibrow. In parallel with that, uh, there's a second core that we're using only to handle all the graphics. So every time we need to calculate and refresh the display, um, that's done on the other core. That way it doesn't interfere with playback of audio and the other way around, the playback of audio doesn't interfere with smooth movement of the eye that you see on the display. And we have a few assisting functions. Basically we have the the interrupt functions for the switches. The switches are replaced by a remote control. So, And then we have a few functions for the eye. First we have the drawing of the eye, frame uh, processing because it, the movement of the eye is done frame by frame. Uh, another supporting function is called split. So that's basically it. I can scroll you all down to it but it doesn't really matter. It's a lot of code. Of course take your time to go through it. Comments are there and if you have any questions feel free to ask me. Uh, you can drop a note in the community and I'll do my best to answer your questions as always. Remember you do need to install a few libraries for this to work. Uh, basically these are the libraries you need to install. You can install them by using the library manager right here. Manage libraries, find the appropriate library and use the correct version and install them. If you cannot find them in the library manager you can use the link that I put there to download them. And you also need to install the ESP32 package with the board manager. For that you go to files, uh, preferences and you click on this little icon and you have to make sure that this line is included. If not put it there then press OK and then you go to the board manager and in the board manager you search for ESP32 boards. You will find two. You need the expressive systems. Make sure you have the correct version. I installed 106. It's not the latest I know, but I know this is stable, so that's why I'm using it. And then all you need to do is press compile and upload, and it will start compiling. So, with everything assembled, it's high time we find out what this baby can do. Wait, it's you? What do you want? So I'm your talking hat. What do you say about that? I'm looking for ingredients for my soup. You wanna come to dinner? <laughs> so you have some questions about electronics? Why don't you visit the Element 14 community and find your answers there? I'm more than happy to assist you. Well, did I ever tell you the joke of the chicken who tried to cross the road? No? I'm not going to. <laughs> so in case you're wondering, I didn't build this hat for cosplay, but I built this hat for judo. I'm actually also a part-time judo teacher and I teach judo to children. And the little children like to uh, uh, do fairy tale based lessons. So while putting on the hat, tell them about fairy tales, I will teach them judo. If you have any ideas on what uh, sounds could be put in here as well, maybe you can use this as a wizard's hat, you can use this as a witch hat or a leprechaun, or maybe something totally different. I really like to hear about it. Tell us all about it in the comments. 
Don't forget to visit the blog. Uh, it's on the Element 14 community website. Uh, a lot of other projects are there. It's nice to take a look if you haven't already. So this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.